Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Now, as regular listeners will know, I love my music. And once again, I'm counting down the days to the Glastonbury Festival next month, where I'm planning on completely losing myself and recharging my mojo by putting my smartphone and technology down and going off the grid for a few days. And while the media will talk about three to five headline acts and how that's the whole purpose of the weekend, the best thing about that whole event is actually not the headliners, but wandering around 900 acres or around, I think it's 1.4 square miles and soaking up over a thousand acts across many, many stages and actually stumbling across things I wouldn't normally listen to. And I even found myself in the Harry Krishna tent a few years ago, but that's a story for another day. (laughs) But I do want to talk about music and technology today, because here in 2019, if you ever looked up, let's say, Drake and tried to go to drake.com, you'd quickly realise it has nothing to do with Drake the artist. For that, you need to go to drakeofficial.com just to find his information. And this highlights how even the world's biggest artists don't always own their .com website. But a new domain name called .music is looking to change that and and change that digital music landscape. Because .music will be the first domain extension launched with music-tailored policies to actually protect creators' rights and ensure that only legitimate music artists, industry professionals and companies can claim their name without fear of cyber squatting or piracy. Essentially, Dot Music is the exclusive community top-level domain name initiative, giving music entities and artists a unique identity online. And the specialised Dot Music web address actually enhances a brand's visibility online and ensures that Dot Music websites are associated with a memorable, self-explanatory and ultimately trusted badge representing the music industry. And what excites me about Dot Music is it's paving the way for a next generation of the internet by building a home to everything related to music. I mean, since 2005, under the slogan We Are Music, Dot Music has also embarked on an extensive communication outreach campaign to launch this domain name and the initiative. So I want to find out more about this journey and how Dot Music won the Dot Music domain war and how a small company with a big dream beat out tech behemoths such as Google and Amazon and secured the coveted top-level domain extension. It's a fantastic story. It's an inspirational story. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Los Angeles so we can speak with Constantine Roussos, founder and CEO of Dot Music. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Constantine. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, hi. Thanks for having me, Neil. Uh, My name is Constantine Roussos. I'm the founder and CEO of Dom Music. I'm responsible for setting and executing the mission and purpose of Dom Music, uh, which is to create a trusted and safe online haven for music consumption and licensing and establishing a safe home on the internet for music community members and protecting intellectual property and fighting piracy and supporting musicians' welfare. And beyond the implementation of the dot music uh, mission, I also lead the strategic direction and execution of dot music's goals to launch a safe and verified dot music domain extension. I think it's fantastic what you're doing here. And for people just hearing about you for the first time, Dot Music is a community-based domain extension that is supported and endorsed by thousands of the most trusted and influential music organizations all across the world. But can you set the scene and bring all the listeners up to speed with exactly what it is and who your customers will ultimately be? So Dot Music uh, is a generic top-level domain extension. It's also known as a TLD or a GTLD, those acronyms. Um, it could also be called a domain ending or a suffix. And just to give examples of other domain extensions, you've got .com, .net, .org, .tv, .uk, .info, et cetera, et cetera. And basically, any member of the global music community will be able to register a .music through you know, global retailers such as GoDaddy, Wix, One and One, and 
the web address will look like something like uh, www.yourname.music. So the customers are obviously musicians, creators, artists, bands, music industry professionals, you know, music companies. In other words, any entity that relates to music. So from an artist's point of view, then, what, what's the difference between having a .music domain compared to a .com domain? That is the billion-dollar question yeah. right there. And, and it's, it's one of the questions that, that we always get. Obviously, what is the difference uh, and what are the advantages of .music over .com? So, so basically, the, uh, the idea of, doc, of .music is for the domain extension to be exclusive to the global music community. In other words, if you're a pet owner um, and you want to do a website about your pet, that wouldn't work. If you're a furniture owner, that wouldn't work either. So it would be exclusive only to uh, music usage. And furthermore, it has uh, enhanced safeguards, copyright protection, brand name protection. Uh, Owners will be verified. And basically, it would be a badge of trust. In addition, something that's very special about dot music will be the built-in security. In other words, HTTPS. So this helps for search engine ranking. Uh, and we have Google, who are the pioneers in that space. Uh, they launched the first domain extension, which incorporates this built-in security, HTTPS, in dot app, dot app. And they have made statements, and it's it's 100% certainty that they give secure sites a ranking boost in Google search. So obviously, if you have a .app, uh, that website will rank higher. With everything held equal, it would rank higher in the search results. And uh, we thought that was fantastic because it, it's aligned with our safe, trusted, secure, and verified .music. So we will also incorporate that built-in security. So we'll be the second top-level domain extension uh, after Google's uh, extensions that will incorporate that. And we believe search engine ranking is a key determinant. Also, the other question that we get with respect to um, .music versus .com is the idea that .music will replace a musicians or a music companies.com. I think that's the, the wrong idea. I actually think that's the, the way that it should work is sort of like social media. You've got your Twitter account, you've got your Facebook, you've got your Instagram, and you've got all these complementers that help you build your brand, increase you know, your reputation and, and traffic. So let me explain. For example, let's say you're a big artist and you've got your .com and your strategy for that is to sell tickets uh, or whatnot. So you determine the strategy. .music, on the other hand, its strength is more technical than anything else. So in other words, it will be optimized to get higher search engine ranking and also to increase conversions. So the studies out there that say that if you have a exact match uh, for something that they're looking for, then your conversion rates are higher. For example, let's take Queen. So, so if you have www.queen.music uh, and people are looking for Queen music, Queen's music, and they see the URL, well, they won't know if it's official or unofficial or whatnot. They would click the higher chance of them clicking on it in the search engine results. Secondly, the, the other uh, issue with .com is uh, Google and Bing and then all the search engines have no idea whether the, the website's verified or licensed or unlicensed, whether it's pirates, whether it's no pirates. So it could be optimized uh, as a signal to Google that, hey, this is safe, this is trusted, you know, this is the authority website and it's official and you can actually build a, a song strategy on there. So for example, today, if you search for a specific song on, on Google or on Bing, 
chances are you will get YouTube at the top, Wikipedia, uh, a bunch of lyrics websites, and you would be wondering where on earth is the official band or artist or, or, or whatnot? Where, where's the link to their song on their website? It's like you having a, a, uh, a product and it's nowhere in the search results. However, it's on Amazon. You know, so 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 basically, dot music could be used with its inherent benefits uh, for a specific strategy to help artists increase conversions, increase traffic, and actually have perhaps two search results instead of one. So, uh, in addition to the, to the search engine ranking, we've got you know the music governance. Uh, dot music is is uh, is governed by the global music industry. So there's so there's policies that are set from the from the music industry that would help uh, all the, the the mission and the purpose of dot music and how to help uh, you know increase traffic and money flowing to to music entities instead of uh, redirecting traffic to unlicensed websites. Or, or any other location on the internet where artists don't get paid or get less money than they should be getting. Um, another thing that we've added to dot .music versus dot .com is appeals mechanisms. So in other words, let's say there's a dispute. Uh, you don't have to sue someone in court to get a decision. We have the registration policies and if there's some issue with the registration policies and, and there's a dispute, let's say one uh, band over another band or, or some issue, then you can actually uh, appeal the decision or the dispute in a very cost-effective manner. It would, be, it would be very, very cost-effective. You won't have to go to court or anything like that. Even in, in the case of mass copyright infringement, uh, we can suspend the website if it's obvious mass copyright infringement. So, so in, in the .com model, uh, in order for a site to be taken down, you're talking about uh, you need a court order, it's very costly, it's very expensive, and then obviously the, the pirate would jump from one domain extension to another. <laughs> so it's like a whack-a-mole kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned the safeguards there. So if you are an up-and-coming um, artist or the next big thing, what, can you tell me a little bit more about those safeguards that will, you'll have in place to protect both the brand name, copyright infringement, and, of course, those dreaded cyber squatters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, the, so the safeguards um, basically will be the, the first domain extension that has music-tailored policies that protects creators' rights. And, you know... The goal is to ensure that legitimate music artists, industry professionals, and, and music companies can claim their name without the fear of cyber squatting or piracy, like you said. Yeah. So, so we're, we're going to be the first domain extension with these kind of safeguards to protect both the you know, brand names and copyright infringement. And some of these policies uh, you know, include verification. Um, in other words, when you, when you sign up, uh, you get verified, and the verification process is is quite it's quite simple. You, you register your, your domain, and then the dot music registry sends you an email with the, with the email you provided, uh, and, and basically you you click on this. It's called the music community membership application, uh, and basically on there you you complete it and you say, okay, this is my name, my address, my valid date of birth, email, phone number, that you agree to the dot .music, dot .music agreement, and you say that you're, you'll abide to the registration policies. And once, you, once this is completed, you get this community membership token, and you can use it for a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we can talk about it later. Uh, and, and basically, uh, you can, you can, uh, after that, you also get uh, verified through a, a, an API. Um, so it's, it's going to be done through a third party verification company. And it usually takes around 60 seconds, which we think is, is, is really fantastic. Um, and furthermore, we have a, what we call the, a, a globally protected music marks list to protect the names of famous music brands and artists. Let's say 
uh, Beatles dot music or or Elvis Presley dot music or whatnot. So, in other words, let's say someone, uh, let's say you, one of these brands is on is on the this music marks list, and someone attempts to register Adele dot music, they get this uh, alert which says this is on the globally protected marks list. Are you the the artist or have the the are you the representative? And if you attempt to register it, and it's not you, we're going to take it back, and you and you lose your money. So, the other thing that we have uh, for dot music is content must only relate to music. So, like I said before, uh, you, you can't register a dot music and talk about dogs or furniture or, or whatnot. And the usage has to be uh, for legal licensed music activities. Another another uh, safeguard that we have. Um, which is quite interesting, is pricing, believe it or not. So uh, in the last, you know, since 2012, since the, the new extensions have come out, we, we were happy to see, you know, how pricing actually influenced abuse. So basically lower prices equate to higher level of abuse. Um, so someone that wants to engage in some malicious activity they usually uh, register cheaper domains, and, and these domains usually have this reputation of a bad online neighborhood. So our objective with, with the pricing is, is to be obviously lower than $50 uh, when it goes to general availability, which is first, first come, first serve. And, and also, we looked at uh, how other domain extensions that have some sort of verification uh, price their domains. Uh, for example, XXX is, if you go to GoDaddy, they're currently uh, at $129. Dot bank is at $849 per year. Dot pharmacy is $975 per year. Uh, the lowest price that we, that we found that we know of is dot NGO, which is $50 a year. So we want to be the most affordable verified uh, domain extension. We, we leave, you know, under, if we have a wholesale price, you know, between 30 and, and 40 or $50, that's quite affordable given all the benefits that one would get uh, as a yearly price. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the safeguards that we have for Dom Music. And I know we spoke about that membership token uh, and that membership token, um, the intent of it is to be used for uh, some dot music initiatives and membership benefits in the future. For example, uh, we may build a, a, a dot music directory, directory. for example, uh, cellist dot music or London dot music or, or whatnot. That let's say you get a dot music, you can put yourself in those directories. We could have a dot music professional social network of some sort, maybe an IMDB for music. Uh, maybe a global public comment portal for specific advocacy efforts that benefits the, the music community and so forth. So we're still gathering a lot of community input on how these membership tokens can be used to benefit the music community. So uh, we're very excited. I absolutely love what you're doing here. And the question I must ask, especially for everybody listening, is when will Dot Music launch and when will they start to to see their favorite artist with that Dot Music extension? And can you talk me through the, the opening phase and the roadmap ahead to get you up and running? Yes, for sure. So we're planning on launching in 2020. And Dot Music will be available to the global music community in three phases. And the first phase is called the sunrise phase. So it's for uh, verified trademark holders. So what that means is if you have a trademark in the, they call it the trademark clearing house, you can, you can register your domain. The issue though with the trademark clearing house on, on the sunrise phase is the internet regulator, ICANN, put this together and it's mandatory for all new domain extensions uh, that, that are being launched. And the issue is, it, we think it's uh, the pricing, it's, it's too expensive to, to, for someone to go and file 
uh, and spend money to, to be part of this trademark clearinghouse to get their domain. Um, so we created a, a phase right after that and combined it with the globally protected marks list. So let's say you're on the globally protected marks list, that costs you zero dollars. So we're not charging anyone to be on the globally protected marks list and their name will be secure. Um, obviously some will, you know, what we've seen is a, a lot of companies or, or, or people have tried to file uh, trademarks of, of uh, you know, premium words, you know, yeah. uh, in order to register them as a, as a trademark. But that, uh, you know, we, we have a list of our premium names as well that will be reserved, like I said, for the dot music uh, registrars, like, you know, hip hop dot music or uh, Los Angeles dot music or French dot music or all, all these category based uh, premium names will be used by whoever registers the dot music. So, so uh, the second phase is called the music community member organization phase, MCMO, where only members of, of um, certain organizations can register their dot music. So what we have seen is that uh, musicians overlap uh, with respect to organizations that they belong to. So let's say, let's say you're a member of ASCAP or PRS for Music, uh, but then you're a member of CD Baby or, or TuneCore, but you're also a member of Reverb Nation. So what we're trying to do is, is uh, ensure that uh, you know, members of these uh, organizations can, can get their names before it goes to general availability. Uh, which let's say you go to GoDaddy or 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 one on one or Wix or Network Solutions or Name.com and you just uh, register on a first come first serve. So so um, the way that we put together the phases is also a safeguard to ensure that everyone gets their names before it goes to general availability. Um, and hopefully, you know, the, the the MCMO phase we're predicting is going to last about six months. Um, and we believe six months is enough time for for everyone to to claim their names before it goes to general availability. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously, this, we're also going to have dispute resolution providers like WIPO or the arbitration form uh, if anyone wants to appeal anything. Um, so it's it's going to be a very exciting time. And uh, I think we put together the launch phase. Uh, it's a first. It's never been done in this manner, but we actually think the it's the responsible way of doing it. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll explain the one of the biggest issues that I have had personally uh, with the way domains have launched in the in the past. So let's say uh, a domain extension is is launching. The selling point to to the music community is register your name defensively so that no one else registers your name. And I believe that's not a, you know, the fear factor is not a good strategy. What we're saying is, look, if you're a big artist, uh, you'll be part of a globally protected marks list. Don't worry, no one can register your name. If, if, if you want to register it, then these are the benefits of registering a dot music in addition to the dot com that you have. If you don't want to register it, then, you know, that's your decision. So we're being more proactive and, and, we're not using fear for someone to register their domain, but we're portraying the benefits and the network effect uh, that dot music will create. So, so it would be great if the general public, as soon as they see a dot music, they will equate that to a trusted domain extension like dot edu or dot gov because there's some form of verification, there's some sort of you know, registration policies that are aligned with the mission of the global music industry. And we believe that's the right way to do it. And it is very early days, yeah. And and I gather that you probably can't reveal too much at the moment and you've locked down to various NDAs, etc. But are there any partnerships that you can share with us today? Yeah, um, I'll tell you what we're planning on doing. Um, um, so... Uh, in terms of partnerships, we have two important uh, objectives. The first objective is who can provide the best domain name system infrastructure 
for dot music in other words who's going to run the back end infrastructure and what we and also who's going to power the music community member organization phase which is where members can register their domains before it goes to general availability um, so we want what we want to do is is and that's what we've been working on is putting together an RFP uh, request for proposal and and putting it out there so we can get offers so we can see which one is aligned with our mission and purpose and what we want accomplished. So there's when you look at the back end infrastructure provider, it could be any of the big boys. It could be Affiliates that runs .org. It could be VeriSign that runs .com. It could be Newstar could be central like and many others we're going to select uh the strategic partner that we we believe will serve our mission best and and this will be replicated for the the mcmo stage provider which is the where where uh, members of music community member organizations can register adult music it could be any any of the of the big retailers out there um so we're, we're putting that together. So uh, that's our biggest priorities uh, in terms of partnerships. And these are strategic partners, which are, you know, it's a long-term relationship. So they're crucially important that, that they will execute and implement uh, dot music the way that we envision it. So that's, you know, that's a bit of the, 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 the goals that we have in the next few months before launch. Is, is putting these strategic partners together to offer the best dot music that can possibly be launched. And what is it about the project that excites you most, especially when about when you're looking towards the future of dot music and what you set out to achieve? What, what excites you most about that? Well, let me tell you, um, I've spoken to a lot of people and, you know, a lot of people have spoken to me as well concerning dot music. And what excites me the most is the ability to start from scratch, you know? Usually a lot of people are, are scared about, you know, launching, launching something new that, that you know, I, I, my perspective is, look, we're gonna have a clean slate for Dom Music. We launch it in the way that the music industry and the music community wants it, with the policies that are music tailored, and it gives us the ability to, let's say, clean up, you know, the internet when it comes to, to music. So it's a clean slate, uh, whether it's enhanced safeguards, whether it's trust, higher search engine results, enhanced security. Um, and, and the other thing is, I truly do believe in the, uh, our over dependence on search engines. Let's say you're searching for, for a specific artist, uh, you have to use Google or Bing or whatnot to to figure out, you know, the official website of a specific artist. Wouldn't it be great if you just think of the artist's name and you just put it in the in the in the browser? That would be quite amazing. Uh, let's say Queen, Queen dot music. You know, uh, you know Justin Bieber of of all people, Justin Bieber dot music. You know, he doesn't even own. JustinBieber.com, which is another interesting part. So I'm very excited about the clean slate. I'm I'm very excited that uh, this will be the first uh, domain extension that also addresses uh, co copyright, which is very exciting. Um, so I think it's it's going to be very interesting. I mean the the uh, the way that domain extensions have been launched traditionally is let's go for volume, let's make it open, let's invite everyone to register a dot music address. I think that would be a very bad idea. And, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we, we started uh, pre-registrations and we saw that uh, about 10% of pre-registrations were for other people's and other brands' names. And, and we think that would be a complete disaster and it's, you know, it defies the purpose of, of adult music. We think it should be clean, it, it should be catered to the music community and everyone will feel at ease. And, you know, over time we'll introduce new, uh, with the membership tokens, new things that, that one can do with adult music. It hasn't been done before and that's what I'm excited about. Call it the blue ocean. If we wanted to compete, compete in the red ocean, that's too much competition. 
why not recreate something and actually create some sort of value and innovation behind a, a domain extension? I love that. And here in 2019, if you ever look up somebody like Drake and go to drake.com, like you said, you realize that, they, that he has nothing to, that, that site, drake.com, has nothing to do with the artist. You'll have to go to drakeofficial.com to find that information. And even the world's biggest artists just don't own their own .com site, which is everything that you've talked about here. But I'm going to ask you to gaze into your crystal ball now. And what do you think will be different in 2020, both from the users and the artist's perspective? I believe that in 2020, the music community and the music industry will rally behind, behind dot music. And I can say that given the uh, supporting organizations that have backed dot music and, and endorsed it. If you look at our supporting organizations collectively, their members, they represent over, I would say, 99% of global music con consumed. I've never heard of any initiative that has had so much global music industry and community support. Uh, so I'm very excited about that, that, that the music industry and community sees the benefits and, and the fact that it's governed by the music community, I think would be fantastic because basically the music community will be, uh, will be steering dot music. And also, wouldn't it be wonderful, like I said earlier, you gave the example of Drake. Um, there's many, 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 many other examples as well. Even ABBA doesn't have ABBA, you know, dot com. Uh, uh, my attorney recently negotiated Prince.com, <laughs> which is interesting. And, and you know, and even Queen.com, let's say uh, Queen wanted to get Queen.com, they'd be sp spending a million who knows, $2 million to get queen.com. With dot music, just imagine that every artist, band, brand gets their name and you just go directly into the navigation bar and type it in. One step. You don't need to go through Google. You don't need to go through search engine results. Um, and there you have it, direct navigation, which is how most people navigate nowadays. You know, if they want to go to Facebook, they go to facebook.com or through the app. They just press a button and they get there. So what, what I think uh, will happen is they will adopt dot music, the artists, and there, there's going to be a lot of innovation that's going to come, come out from dot music. And it's through feedback from everyone that's part of the music community that we will get to that stage. But I think we'll have a really, really good uh, reference point to begin with responsible policies and also cleaning up, you know, the mess that we have in the search engine results when we don't know whether a site is licensed or unlicensed or, you know, how much is, is the artist making or the creator making? Do we know? Are they making anything? Uh, so, you know, there's a value to a visitor to a website. You can, you know, they can get their email address, you know, they can click on ads that the, the artists may have. So, so I think it's exciting that artists and bands, music industry professionals and companies have full control of their brand. Um, and, and hopefully we'll, you know, we won't repeat the, uh, you know, because a lot of artists and and creators rely a lot on social media. If you remember back in the day, MySpace was huge, and now they're they're no longer relevant. If you remember Vine, you know they went under. So so I think it's special for artists and you know music brands to own their name. It's you know it's their brand, and it's very very important. So hopefully. Um, They'll see the value in dot music, and they'll, you know, the the network effect will make it even more valuable because Google and Bing and and the search engines will look at it and say, okay, this is this has the authority, and it's trusted. Uh, it's like a Wikipedia or a dot edu. This is vetted, you know. Th let's let's raise it in the search results. And I, I think a lot of musicians and creators will be very very creative with their dot music and I'm excited to see what's going to happen beyond that. We just provide the tools and it's up to the artists and the creators to leverage those tools. Now, before I go, there will be people listening all over the world and startup founders at various stages of their journey. And to get 
dot music to where it is right now. You, you guys have been on an incredible journey, and have, you know you've been at odds with some of the biggest tech names in the world. So, can you maybe just share a, a brief overview of your startup journey? Because I'm I'm sure it will inspire others to follow in your footsteps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit of warning: this is not legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> so. so. Um, I, I started this initiative back in 2005, um, and I was observing Facebook versus MySpace, and I saw the, the you know, everyone would be saying, MySpace is never going to go down. You know, they're so powerful. And Facebook came out, and Zuckerberg decided to focus strictly on students, so that belong to American accredited educational institutions, post-secondary. And Facebook verified everyone for their .edu email address. And, you know, they, it, it was all about trust. It was all about a, a tribe of students from different universities that, that these students are passionate about. And the rest is history. It was all about trust. They used the .edu email address. And I got inspired and I thought, hey, couldn't we do this with dot music, like a verified dot music where we know it's licensed, we know that the monies are going to flow to the artist and the artist has control. Um, uh, you know, let's go a step further than, than, than what Facebook did. And ultimately, Facebook opened it up to everyone else and the rest is history. So I thought, okay, let's do a dot music like that. So I began my journey in 2005. I pitched it to the music industry. Um, and uh, what happened was they liked the idea so much that, you know, they, they did their own initiative to apply for dot music, the traditional music industry, I would say. Um, and then in 2012, my company went in to, for, for dot music and we got, you know, a, a big, big support from the digital uh, music community. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of overlap. Let's say all the digital distributors were, were with us like CD Baby and The Orchard and TuneCore, also Reverb Nation. So a lot, a lot of the, the, the big names that were with ASCAP or the RIAA or, or you know, the major labels uh, were overlapping with the supporters that, that we had. So, so there were two community initiatives that, that applied in 2012, which was the window that the regulator gave, that ICANN gave to apply for a dot whatever. So basically, um, the applications were in, went in and the window closed in 2012. And then the regulator ICANN announced who applied for Dot Music. It was my company, it was Google, it was Amazon, Donuts, Radix, MMX, GRS, and a company called Far Further that was supported by, I may say, the, the traditional music industry. Uh, so both uh, my initiative and, and the far further initiative applied its community and community if you met the criteria that the regulator set that would be determined by an independent evaluator then you would prevail um so what happened was uh you know uh you looked at google amazon and etc uh, etc et and, and i was like okay this looks like uh it would be quite difficult to overcome so you know, we fast forward seven years since the application and we prevailed. So it's, it's been a long journey. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, the, uh, in order to get to this point, uh, we've, A, made mistakes. B, we've tried everything to, to prevail, uh, given that we were the least funded. Actually, we don't even have investors, believe it or not. Um, and, but we really, really, uh, looked at all the policies that the regulator set and we looked at all the opportunities that we could, we could win. Uh, we've tried every single, we went through everything. Uh, and sadly enough, we lost every single <laughs> of these, uh, initiatives, whether they were legal rights objections, community objections, community evaluation, uh, I must have lost, uh, my company must have lost 21 decisions in a row. Or was it 22? Oh, yeah, 21. And then we had, we appealed, uh, we had five appeals and we lost every single one of these appeals. 
So I, I would say uh, I was the biggest loser, but ultimately the biggest winner. <laughs> so, um, but you know, a lot of strategy was was in the you know it was a lot of you know a lot of strategy to get to the point that we that we were at, um, and we had to leverage the the fact that uh, you know we didn't have the the financial prowess of uh, of a Google or an Amazon. And the, and the way that these extensions are usually settled according to the, uh, the regulator's rules is if more than one applicant uh, goes for a specific domain extension, uh, it goes and you don't prevail in community, which in the end, we were part of this appeal system that lasted three mm-hmm. years. Um, then it gets auctioned out to the highest bidder, which for us, we'd have 0% of prevailing. Um, so it was definitely a long journey. Maybe, you know, uh, there's a, obviously we're under NDA, but maybe one day there'll be a documentary on, on, on how this prevailed. Uh, but it, it took a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, it took a lot of, uh, you know, the realization that, that you cannot win every battle uh, but ultimately, you could win the war if you have a strategy, a long-term strategy, and 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 you know you you look at the, you know you're playing chess. Yeah, you may lose a lot of battles along the way, but if you win at the end, you win at the end. But nothing was accidental. I tell you that. That's for sure. <laughs> what a fantastic story, and I'm sure it's just a Netflix documentary just waiting to happen, isn't it? But uh, for everyone listening, if you want to stay up to speed with all the progress that you're making with Dark Music and how that begins to take shape, what's the best way of them to find out more information or maybe even reach out to your team and ask a question if we have any artists listening? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so there's – so basically, if you want to pre-register – your dot music address, you can go to www.music.us. Again, www.music.us, and you can pre-register, uh, which will give you the, you know, you, you'll be first in the loop to, to, uh, to get the information on, on the phases and when launch is going to happen and how you can be, how you can put your name on the, on the globally protected marks list or, or where you can register the dot music domain of your brand before it goes to general availability. Um, the, the second uh, outreach that you can do if you're a music community member organization, so let's say you, you're, you're a, you know, a legitimate music organization with members and you'd like to offer dot music to your members at, at the wholesale price, um, then at the top of the website on www.music.us, it says apply as a uh, dot music reseller and MCMO, music community member organization. You basically provide your details, and we go through, you know, we, uh, through the application. And, and if you qualify, obviously, you 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 can become a a dot music reseller. Um, if you want to talk to us specifically, you can just uh, go to the website again, and and you can look under the category team, and we've got our LinkedIn profiles there. Uh, and and you can definitely add and, and reach out. We'd like to hear from everyone. That's for sure. If you have any ideas, uh, and it's th- and it's through the music community's feedback that we put together all these registration policies. And we, without the input, we wouldn't have gotten here. That's for sure. Excellent. Well, I love how you're creating a critical domain that is tailored for the music creator community with top music, but. Just as much as that, I equally love the inspirational story behind it. You've been, on, you've been on an incredible journey and it's just great to see it take shape and everything you've created, everything you've worked towards is finally coming to fruition now. So I wish you the best of luck for the future, but a big thank you for t- taking the time to come and speak with me today and share that story. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me, Neil. Much appreciated. I love the story behind how Dot Music won that Dot Music domain war and how a company with a big dream managed to beat tech behemoths such as Google and Apple and actually secure that top-level domain extension. And for me, stories like that 
and sharing them to listeners in 165 countries on this Daily Tech podcast and beam that message across Spotify, Pandora, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Stitcher and so many different platforms out there. That is why I record this podcast every day. Because yes, I'm based here in the UK. Today's guest was in LA. But I want someone, but I want someone somewhere to be listening on a bus or on a train or going for a walk, listening to this episode and listening to today's conversation. And maybe before listening to the interview, previously put limitations on themselves or their ambitions and thought, what's the point? I can't compete and I can't make a difference. Because the dot music story shows that we can all make a difference. And with so much technology at our disposal, we can all do anything if we put the hours in and stop using that $1,000 smartphone to endlessly scroll or take pictures of our food and do something different and make our own mark on the world. Yes, I know it's cheesy, but I was brought up in the 80s on (laughs) idealistic movies and TV shows. But I do truly believe that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. So if today's interview inspired you, please let me know and also share your ideas, your insights and any takeaways that you might have picked up from today's conversation. And you can reach me directly by emailing me at techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website's techblogwriter.co.uk, not techblogwriter.music, unfortunately. And you can also get me on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Just look for Neil C. Hughes. So I hope you enjoyed today's conversation with Constantine as much as I did. And if you are attending this year's Glastonbury Festival, let me know and I'll meet you by the Brothers Pear Cider Bar. And I might even buy you a drink. <laughs> that could end up costing me a fortune, couldn't it? But I did, I've did. i put it out there, so we'll see what happens. But more than anything, just a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.